I'm up early getting paper till I pass out. I see me winning every time I pull the cash out. Swimming and women hey, got these up. Off the top with J. Rob the Law. What's up? We got Berto Brown in the building. How are you? Yeah. Feeling? What's up? What's up? Feeling good, man. Feeling good. Man, what do you do? What's your What's your specialty? I heard you. You, you, you were like a cook or something? You make, you make food and shit? Is that true? Yeah, well, I like to write poetry and then turn it into a musical, musical form. Oh, so you make music? Yeah, what I like to make music? music. Man, I make uh, rap music uh, and R&B. <coughs> Excuse really? me. Yeah. You make any country music at all? Uh, I don't really do country, but I can sing some country songs. You like, do you like country music? I like all music, but I do like country music. You like music. heavy metal? Uh, some of it. You like Slipknot? Uh, I've heard of some of their stuff, but it's not something Psycho I went out and bought. <laughs> I wasn't just on, running Psycho after it. <laughs> uh, you don't like no can Cannibal Corpse, nothing like that? I've never heard of them. <laughs> uh, you like some Insane Clown Fossey? Uh, nah, nah, I don't, I don't <laughs> listen to that. <laughs> uh, who's, your, who's your favorite all-time rapper? One. One rapper. Uh, I'd have to say uh, Biggie Smalls and uh, Tupac Shakur. Heck yeah. So you like the old school stuff? Yeah, would yeah, I like 90s. Would you say your style is more old school? Uh, yeah, mine's more old school. Yeah, I don't do all that mumble rapping stuff. I just tell it how it is, and, and I like to tell stories and paint a picture that people can see. <laughs> Heck yeah. Do you dislike mumble rap? I don't dislike it. It's just everybody sounds the same, and really I don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. I like relevance. <laughs> so do you think that uh, hip-hop has uh, been weaponized? Uh, I wouldn't say that it was weaponized, but uh, it just all depends. I mean, some people do use it like that, but there's all kinds. Okay, so uh, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Nowata, Oklahoma. I'm a country boy. Yeah, I was raised up on the land hunting and fishing. So uh, to like hip-hop and making rap music is kind of hard for me because I have to incorporate what's real around me and try to put it into an artistic you know rhyme scheme and make it sound pleasing to the ear because i wasn't direct you know directly living in the city i was in the country but my family are in this big bigger cities so i got a chance to hear a little bit of uh, you know hip-hop and r&b are you more likely to run into uh more favorable people in the country or in the city uh, probably more in the city. A lot of the country people don't like rap. They call it rap crap. So, no, yeah. So, uh, in the city more is more they like, like in it. The country? Uh, man, they like to listen to country <laughs> music, man. I mean, they like that country <laughs> music. Like, that that red call. dirt stuff, you know. They yeah. like to talk about, you know, some things that I, you know, I don't, I don't do exactly what they do. Let's put it like that. I do my own thing. But, uh, yeah, but in the country, they like country, man. <laughs> they like rock out there and they like alternatives. Heck yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like some of that too. I mean, I feel yeah. like having an open mind. It's good in all music. You know. Yeah. I like having an open mind to different things is important. You know, and I feel like a lot of the uh, like the, the the boomer generation they don't really like hip hop a lot. Is what I mean. There is some that do, but it's like uh, I guess it really just depends on uh, you know maybe more what like side of town someone's at. But who knows? I have no idea. But, uh, so do you have any ho hobbies or anything? Uh, like yeah, I got a lot of hobbies, man. I like to play softball and uh, I used to play football and, you know, I like to fish and hunt, you know. Shit, I even like video games. <laughs> but, uh, uh, man, I, I like more like the Final Fantasy type, the role-playing oh, okay. games. That's what I like to do. That way I don't just beat them, you know, because those games, I used to play like Tekken and stuff like that. You know, you, you just beat them so many times, you know, in a row and just keep beating them and then change characters. But, you know, I like playing, you know, games that kind of last a little while and make you have to use strategy. So you like games that uh, you have to, like, think about. Like, it's not just some, like, quick, like, like uh, shooter type game, like, like Call of right. Duty or something. Or, right. I mean, what, what about something like Minecraft? What about something like that? <laughs> Man, I can't stand watching watch those like kids Minecraft. play Minecraft. Well, Minecraft is actually a pretty useful tool, in my opinion, to be able to help with uh, organizing and, and yeah. things like that, in my opinion. But yeah, it, it just takes too long it. to build all that stuff. Oh, so you don't like games, <laughs> well, I do like games. You know, like it's games just like, long, but not that yeah, long. something. Yeah, I ain't trying to build nothing. <laughs> so what what inspired you to make music? Well, whenever I was a kid, I remember the teacher used to 
Rita's books, and uh, a lot of times she would do Dr. Seuss books. And I heard the rhyming in it, and I just fell for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was at a really young age, you know. I was probably like maybe 11, you know, or younger, maybe 10, 11 years old. And I started going to the library, and those were the books that I, I checked out too. Anything that had rhymes and poems and things like that in it, um, that drove me to try to create music. Because I realized that people who were making hip-hop and rap music were more or less just rhyming the same as Dr. Seuss, you know. And uh, so I learned to try to do it on my own and, and figure out how to make it. Just start off with Dr. Seuss books. Interesting. So yeah. uh, what do you think that is, uh, what, what do you think the, the best part of uh, hip hop music or rapping is? Uh, what different factor would it be that is the best part? It, would it be uh, the rhyming, uh, the flowing, uh, the delivery, or, well, I guess rhyming, Delivery or flow, which one? Man, that, like? that's a hard question because, man, there's some people's stuff that as soon as it comes on, you're rocking it, but as soon as they open their mouth, you're like, nah. And then there's some that the beat ain't good, and then you hear their words, and you're like, wow, I didn't think about that. But really, truly, to me, it's the message, man. It's the message. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's the other thing I forgot was the message that's incorporated into So the message. Yeah. Okay, so um, you know, do you know about the four elements of hip-hop? Uh, I don't know all of them, no. I, so, I, it's, uh, it's rapping, DJing, uh, graffiti, and dancing. <laughs> so, which one do you think is the most important element? Um, I would, the musical side of it is what I would say. I mean, the part that where you can reach the masses, you so know. Probably, I mean, yeah, that kind of would go more you, towards the DJing and rapping side. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that would reach more people than some graffiti on a wall. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I could agree. The dancing and stuff is cool, but not everybody gets to see that. But a lot of things are played on the radio, you yeah. know. People can but see. They are all important. It in their, like, all, when they all come together, you know, and they're all important in their own ways, but that's yeah. interesting that you think that, but I think the same thing too, but maybe just as uh, rappers uh, or artists, we're a little bit biased to that, because I, I bet if you, but if we asked a uh, break dancer, you know. Yeah, he yeah, he's going to be like, yeah, dancing, yeah, dancing man, it's <laughs> everything. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, you have a group, right? Yeah. Uh, what's your group called? Uh, we're, well, we call ourselves the Midwest Icons. Okay, so how did that begin? Uh, man, it started off, uh, I finally was able to get me a studio. And, I, and when I got one, I got me a portable studio. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's called Aspire. And anyhow, I can travel anywhere. It runs on Wi-Fi and uh, internet. And uh, I can record in the park, I can record in the car, I can record anywhere. So I started making my own music. And I found uh, a young man by the name of OTW Steady. He was, he was pretty young at the time, and uh, many, I seen that he had the potential. So he lived in a totally different town. And so, you know, when I get off work late at night, man, I drive all the way to Copan from No Water, where I lived. And I'd pick him up. And then I had this other female. Um, her name was Erin Bear, and one hell of a singer. <laughs> I haven't talked to her in a while, but yeah, she's one hell of a singer. And uh, anyhow, us three would get together, we'd get in the car, and uh, we'd just start recording. So uh, after we, uh, Made a, made a few songs, we ended up meeting a guy named Castro X. Uh, he goes by uh, King Castro X. And man, this guy right here put me on on the show. So we put our stuff together and uh, decided we're gonna get on this show. And us three had to come up with a name and we came up with the Midwest Icons. That's what we agreed to. And uh, we rocked it. We went to uh, our first show. It was at uh, the Juice Maker Lounge. It was like last year in January. And after that, we didn't do anything else until just recently so that's where uh that's where we met right that's actually where we met at. yep i met you there yeah that was, a, that was a really dope show that was the first time we were ever on stage wow yeah and that's we didn't know what we were doing we just got up there and just tried to do the best we could <laughs> well, that's really interesting because i mean it's like and y'all all have like such different like vibes as well so it yes. like, really was just an interesting uh, con uh conglomeration you know, of like, like seeing all y'all is like, it's just a very like, uh, the, the look of, of that group is very interesting, you know? So. Yeah, yeah, we were, we were different. I mean, we don't try to follow anybody else. We just do whatever our hearts, you know, feel and, and whatever just comes to mind that works together. 
But exactly. yeah, recently, um, it's just me and OTW Steady, uh, our, our girl uh, that was in our group. She's kind of doing some other things uh, right now, but uh, me and him's continuing to go. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're still trying to get better at what we do and get better at, you know, our, at our craft. Heck yeah. So what, what makes you different from other artists? Uh, what makes me different is that I'm, you know, I'm not from the direct city. I, I know about that life because my family's, you know, cousins and stuff. I spend a lot of time with them in the city, uh, all the way from Kansas City down, uh, down to, here to Tulsa, um, you know. Uh, anyhow, yeah, uh, just lost my train of thought. <laughs> But what makes me different is um, I'm, I am from the country, and it's hard for me to sometimes create these songs and still stay true to my roots and where I'm from because, hey, I, I hunt, I fish, I, I kill animals, but I only do it to eat them. I'm, I'm not trying to kill people. And trying to make music that's tasteful. You know, my, my aunt, she always told me if I uh, wanted to make rap music, tell people something good, you know, tell them something good, and, and you don't have to cuss on every line. I mean, everybody else do what they want to do. I don't care. I mean, y'all's music sound good, too. But me, particularly me, for my music, I try not to use a lot of curse words. Because she always told me that if uh, I have to say a curse word in every other line or every line, that means I really don't have anything good to say. And I wasted that, those bars, you know. So. so do you feel like it's really important to be able to reach the last generation just as much as it is to reach the next generation? Yes, I don't. I don't believe that it's a good idea to uh, limit myself to 21 and, and over. I want my music to be able to reach all generations. I want kids to be able to hear it. I want their mom and dad to hear it, their grandparents to hear it. And uh, I'm not restricted that way, you know? I mean, I've had, I had songs before where I'd ask a friend to play it and he doesn't respond. And then I call him back and was like, hey, did you get a chance to listen to that? And he's like, man, I haven't been able to listen to it. My kids are in the car. And I don't want that. Yeah. I want everybody to be able to hear it. And I say some things that uh, the kids, they don't even understand. It just goes over their head, but the parents know exactly what I said. So, yeah, I want to reach everybody. So you want to be a positive influence on the next generation? I just want to tell people my truth. And, uh, yeah, I want to give do a positive. To yeah, I want to do it tastefully. I mean, no, nobody's perfect. Everybody does bad things in their lives, and, you know what I mean? And you can talk about those kind of things, but you don't have to make it sound like it was a great thing. So do you put uh, messages about God uh, in your music? Does God have an impact in your music at all? Um, to be honest with you, man, if I, could, <laughs> if I could talk about God all the time, I would. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I do, uh, I, I do have uh, a religion. You know, I'm Christian. So, you know, I believe in in a higher power, a higher being, and not everybody does, and that's fine. And you, that's to each their own. But uh, in my music, I do say things like, you know, I'm, I'm uh, thankful to God, or, well, in other words. Or I'll say, thank God, or, you know, things like that. I throw those in there. And um, just to let people know that, you know, I do have something. You know, I do believe in something. But I don't try to force it on people or anything like that. Heck, yeah, well... Yeah, I, I understand that. I mean, it's good to like throw throw it in there sometimes based yeah. on your own personal beliefs, but you don't want to I'm be I'm so thankful preachy, that uh, you know? just open my eyes and see another day because I'm thankful to God, you know? Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's, that's part of that positive message stuff, though, and I feel like that's really important. Yeah, you know, it is. I honestly, I mean, you haven't, you don't see that a lot uh, uh, recently, but I mean, honestly, now, as of now, I've been like, I've been doing, like, working with a lot of clients, and a lot of people have been making songs about like saying stuff about God, saying mm -hmm. being against the devil, and it's crazy. Yeah. I'm like, and it usually there's some of my favorite artists. Some yeah. People that are, um, you have to be bold. You have to be bold. Because, I mean, uh, do you feel like uh, Christians are being persecuted all over the world at the, in some degree? I mean, well, by other, know, I mean, I don't, don't know about, about the other side of the yeah, world. Yeah, I mean, because there's going to be some religions that don't believe, you know, so. But do you feel like Christians are persecuted? I believe that there are some that, that are, but you know, I know, I believe in what I believe, and I don't care what nobody, you know, what nobody yeah, thinks, exactly. so they better not bring it to me. <laughs> For real. So, I, I noticed that you hit a lot about the mics. Yeah. yeah. Why? Um, yeah, I like to do it for practice, man. I mean, I started off doing karaoke. That's all I did was trying to get past my, my shyness, you know, and my fear of being in front of people because I have real bad anxiety. 
And uh, yeah, on the outside, it looks like, uh, you know, I'm all cool, calm and collected, but inside my brain is running 100 miles yeah. per hour. Butterflies are eating me up inside and I feel like I want to puke. But uh, so I, I learned to get on the microphone and try to do it with my back to people. And because I know, you know, I just, I don't know, man, I just feel like I'm supposed to be doing this. So I learned to get up there on and do that and get past that fear. And then someone came to me and was like, hey, man, why don't you do your own, your own music? Don't you make your own music? And I was like, yeah. I do, and they're like, hey, yeah, try it. So here I am doing op open mics to now face the people so do you feel and like do it. The karaoke is like a pretext to open mics. Uh, it, it is kind of, it and is, because like it's the their open voice. Mics are pretext to shows. Yeah, it's like a, yeah, like a step down. Yeah. That's really interesting. I'm not a huge fan of karaoke. So yeah. That, that stuff is really annoying. I hate being in a bar and hearing, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> man. Like, oh, man. I'm like, man. <laughs> I'm going outside. <laughs> yeah, back at home, man, there's some uh, people just like us, you know, they get together all the time and, and do these like, like karaoke stuff. Yeah, they, they have a karaoke scene over there. There's there's a guy named uh, Mac, Mac MC, and he runs a few shows around there. And that's where I got started was with him. That's really awesome, though. And I <laughs> yeah. started to see the importance, though, even though I kind of have a distaste for that yeah. uh, or a disdain for it to a yeah. certain degree. I realize like, it's good practice, and that'll just bring more people to open mics eventually. Because yes. I, I can't just sit there and be a hater on karaoke. I mean, I'm sure people are the haters on open mics, but they don't realize how important those can be. Um, so have you ever ran into somebody that's like, why are you doing open mics? That, it's not going to do anything for you. Like, have you ever, what would you do if somebody asked you that or said that to you? Well, to be honest with you, I really don't care. You know, <laughs> I really don't care what they think. I'm just doing it for the love of the music and the, you know, the camaraderie and and meeting new people and doing what I love, even if they don't love it. They can say whatever they want, to, you know, what they want to say. Do you feel but, like, oh, yeah. sorry. Oh, no, you're good, you're good. That's pretty much it. Do you feel like there is a, a great scene in Tulsa for music and hip hop? Man, I'm, man, I've been here doing this for about three months. I'm, I'm still, I consider myself new at this. Still trying to remember my words still and uh, be able to have stage presence. But uh, I, man, it's crazy. Uh, since I started, I'm starting to see more and more people starting to show up. I'm seeing more and more talent. Man, I mean, everybody's different. You can't even compare people. You can't. Everybody's in their own lane going to the same place, and we're all trying to get to the top. And shoot, man, yeah, this environment is, is amazing, man. You don't see this anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I mean, for, especially for me. Yeah, and it's getting bigger, and it's growing, and, yeah. and I love it. So who's your top three favorite rappers in Tulsa? Oh man, I man, that's a hard part, man. That's a hard part because man, that that's a hard part. I can't even say that because there's so many different oh, talents. Oh man, I, I really can't say. Man, I, I man, I tell you some people, man. Is I think it's at the top. All right, I'd have to say like like JDB, man. He's man, that dude's a dope artist, man. He does his own thing. Nobody does it like you. Then you know, like we got you, we got J Rob the Law, man. You dope too, man. I like your stuff. Brandon had enough, man. He's He's up there too, man. He's doing things, and shoot, man, you gotta uh, shoot, man. Some new people too, man. <laughs> so I mean, it's hard for me. King Castro, he's right up there at the top with, you know, with you guys too. So it's hard for me, man. I got. If you ask me who, who my top twenty was, I put all y'all together, yeah, and y'all's okay. all fucking dope for to real. me. <laughs> but see, that's why I feel like that's an important question, just because, like, I mean, I hate the favoritism stuff. Yeah, I'm sure you just Love like Lace it. is up there too. Yeah. Aaron I'm Sawyer's sure, up sure there too. Like the, I, sure it's crazy, like man. You got you got well, Nerdy Verdy up there too. Well, 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 I just like the favoritism <laughs> thing, but I feel like that, like being able to exactly. really one like, eight's good too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's like the thing is, it's like we all kind of know that, like everybody within our like scene that yeah. we're building in our community, yeah. we're all really dope. You yeah, know we all dope. We all dope. We all just doing our own thing. You're doing good at what you do because I can't do that. JDB's doing what he's doing. Castro's doing what he's doing. I can't do what everybody's doing. All we I can all do is have, do what I do. We all have an important hey, role. they're great at what they do. <laughs> yeah. Because I can't do it. We all have an important role. In yeah. To some degree. So we like, got flavor, bro. We got flavor. For real. So, like, uh, with the with live shows, how do you feel about doing live shows and bar gigs? Like, how does that how is that going? Man, now with these live shows, that's a little different, you know. Uh, I had to take my words off and everything, you know, practice over. And, uh, yeah, the scene is is popping. <laughs> I really show? like it. What's your favorite show you've done? Oh, man. 
Well, I have to say there, there's got to be two. And uh, the first one was my very first one. That was last year at uh, the Juice Maker. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite of all because that right there was the one that told me, hey, maybe this is what I, I need to be doing, you know? Maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the next one, I, Brandon, man, Brandon had enough, had a good one over at the, um, the Blackbird Tavern. Man, that one over there. Blackbird on Pearl? Oh, yeah, Blackbird on Pearl. Yeah, my bad. Uh, yeah, that one was dope, man. That one was dope. But then <clears throat> we did that other one. Um, I'm trying to think, where was it at? It was at the White Crow. White Crow Tavern. The White Crow Tavern. That's funny. That, now, that, those that was, two. That's funny. That's, that's why I tangled them up. Yeah. That's funny. White Crow Tavern, Blackbird on Pro. That's yeah, funny. I tangled them up because <laughs> both of those were dope shows. I mean, those were those were the top. Yeah. But honestly, like one of my favorite shows, like as of recent, was... Uh, Honestly, those two that uh, that you were on that we did at Mama Sue's with David R. and everybody yeah. like that. Oh yeah. my gosh, those were so <laughs> great. Yeah. Like, uh, like, like, I'm like surprised. It was that, jumping. That, I'm surprised that we can have such a great like audience and, and pull at a place like uh, Mama Sue's at 31st Amigo. I'm like, damn, like this is like, like it's, it's been live, going bro. Great over there, dude. Like, it's yes. been amazing. Numbers are growing. For real, and like, uh, so. So, what is your favorite venue in Tulsa? Oh man, well they're all they're all different, but if I had a favorite, one that I would go to all the time uh, to do show. Okay, let's put it like this. All right, to do karaoke or karaoke. I'm sorry, uh, to do um, open mics. Uh, to do open mics is Lot Six. Lot Six is a spot. I mean, that atmosphere, the environment, everything about it, man. I mean, it's just low, you know, it's just like mellow and, I don't know, man, comfortable, comfortable, let's put it like that. Yeah, I love but, this part. But for doing doing shows, man, you know, Mama Sue's is pretty cool, but it, it's just kind of small. What are you talking about? <laughs> I know, but Blackbird on Pearl probably would be the best one, I think, you know, for shows. For big shows where you can have a lot of people. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. I mean, I always liked Rabbit Hole. Uh, Rabbit Hole's cool. Yeah, um, I've been there a couple of times. And it but, was... but, like, Fazler Hall is what we need to aim for, because that has, like, that's huge. It is crazy out there. But uh, what's the next venue, like, that you haven't performed at that you would like to perform at? Oh, man. Um... That, that that's a tough one too. Um, yeah, I thought I was gonna uh, perform at the farmers market. That was one I was really wanting to try, mm. but I didn't get a chance to because the venue changed. But uh, but it's all good, man. One day I'll I'll probably be there. So we'll just see how things go. Okay, so uh, if you had uh, any state to perform at to choose from, which one would you choose? Outside of Oklahoma? Yes. Uh, probably go towards Texas, or not Texas, towards Kansas, probably. Okay, that'd be easy. We can get you up in Kansas yeah. easily. So, between life, work, and music, how do you juggle it all? Juggle it all <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> and maintain. How do you maintain? <laughs> yeah, awesome. yeah, it's juggling. tough. It's tough, because, you know, when we do these open mics and we do these shows, sometimes they're during the work week, and yeah. I got a full-time job, so... Yeah, it's tough. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go up there and I'll show my participation, come out and root for everybody and then do my thing and, uh, you know, and have fun. And at the end of the night, you know, I still got to go home and try to get up early in the morning and get to work. So, uh, yeah, what I try to do before I come out for a show is I'll, I'll take a nap. Try to take a, take a couple hour nap, then I'll, I'll make my run to Tulsa, which is an hour drive. And then I'll go up there and do my thing and then uh, leave, you know, late, try to get right back up at four o'clock in the morning, oh get a couple hours of sleep and then uh, do it again. <laughs> you, you call that dedication? Uh, man, I, all I know is I have a passion and something's driving me. And uh, yeah, I'd have to say I am dedicated, man, because I want to be good at my craft, you know, I got to perfect it. So who do you think considers you as one of their favorite rappers? <laughs> I don't know. I That's really don't know. Question, it? Uh, it was probably that drunk lady that was bobbing to it oh that one God. day, and everybody else was just, like, walking around. 
talking. talking. About <laughs> Maybe her, yeah. She's my number one fan. I forgot yeah. her name, but yeah, she's really nice. <laughs> if I knew her name, I'd probably give her a shout out. But uh, but yeah, she's a fan. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure she is. Um, so where do you see music taking you in the next 10 years? Actually, man, you know, I've been doing this for, you know, I, I mean, having the passion and love for music ever since I was a little kid. But I'm starting to get older now, you know, so I, I only got a few more years probably. Uh, and then after that, I want to try to help other kids. I want to help people that's coming up that don't know what they're doing um, to, you know, show them the way when others wouldn't show me. And I had to figure it out on my own and make it a little easier for them. And uh, I just plan on just more or less kind of like being a, a mentor or something like that. And uh, who knows, I might be putting on shows and things like that. But I, my plan is to be in, still in the music business, just maybe not performing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, awesome. Well, that wraps up that segment of the interview. What I'm going to yeah. do now is ask you random questions. Oh, damn. Here we um, go. So uh, what do you think about the New World Order? Are you talking about with wrestling or <laughs> no, <laughs> wrestling? I ain't even not wrestling. No, I'm not wrestling. talking about WWE. I'm talking mm -hmm. about the New World Order. What do you think about that? I mean, I, I believe that you know that it could it could happen. I mean, I believe it could happen. Do you but think the New World right Order is a good thing that. or a bad thing? Man, there's everybody's got an opinion, man. Everybody's got all these views, but me myself, I just I, I believe it when I see it, and so I don't. I don't even mess with it. Do you think being, a, uh, as an American, it's important to be patriotic? I believe so, yes. Do you think You're part borders of are necessary in countries? N well, yeah, kind of. They, they kind of are, but, but you know, we're all immigrants. Think, we made it across. Yeah, that's true, so. of course. Uh, do you think that uh, us being self-sufficient self with uh, oil is important? Uh, yeah, I do, because... You know, they want to go all green, but right now, you know, we still got to have, you know, our natural products, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to have uh, – dang, I just lost my train of thought. So how do you think uh, – what do you think about uh, how Biden is doing as a president? I think he's uh, doing real good at, at taking hits and uh, <laughs> being talked crap to because he's Falling just – Yeah, he's, a, he's just a president. He can't really do anything – I mean, so he's, just a, he's just a face. Do you think that uh, a president's policies could directly impact uh, the uh, price of uh, oil and gas? Uh, I think that it, it, it could. I think, yeah. Do you it, think it that uh, them shutting down the pipeline in America is partially the reason why the uh, gas prices are outrageous right now? I think that's a big part of it, yes. Do you think that, uh, do you think that the Clinton Foundation really had people killed? Man, I heard all kinds of stuff, but man, we, you can't believe all, everything that you hear. Do you, you think know? that the, uh, the AI algorithm is uh, using the system for digital blackmail? Hey, man, that, that computer is smart, man. It, it could do whatever it wanted to. Art, artificial intelligence is what you're talking about? Yeah, it's possible. Supercomputer, I mean, you know, there's a supercomputer that's doing all kinds of stuff that we don't know about. Would you believe me if I said artificial intelligence is the devil? Oh man, the man made it. <laughs> uh, it could be. It could be. What is the best source for news? Oh man, that's the hard part because you know you can watch CNN and they tell you something, and you can go over to uh, uh, what is the other one? Um, you, uh, dang it, man! I, I don't MSNBC, know. MSNBC, Fox. Yeah, Fox News. Sorry, Fox News. And they're talking something totally different. So it's just a bunch of people's opinions. It's kind of hard to know where you, you could get a, uh, you know, get truth, get truth. Sorry, I keep interrupting. But oh, you're you good. Think that Trump was a bad president. Uh, I wouldn't say that he was a bad president. I just think he liked to talk a lot. Do you think <laughs> that Obama was a bad president. Um, I think Obama had good intentions, but he could only do what he can do. You know, everything has to be voted for before anything can be passed, so. Do you think that Bush was a good president or a bad president? I mean, I was, I was, pretty, I was pretty young whenever Bush was a, a president, but it just seemed like we, we had a lot, of, a lot of war time during those times, and I didn't like it. Oh, yeah. Did you know that Obama uh, did the most, well, never mind. Did, did you know that there was the most drone strikes 
that were, uh, were were under Obama. The most drone strikes that they've done under someone's presidency were under Obama. Did you know that? Uh, yeah, I remember seeing some of that, you know, on the news and everything. But, mm -hmm. man, you know, when they did that, none of our people died. Hmm. Do you think that 9-11 was an inside job? Oh, man, there's a lot of conspiracies, <laughs> but those planes kind of look like ours. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> they kind of look like our planes. Do you think 9-11 was, uh, uh, was a pretext to start a uh, war for false uh, reasons in Afghanistan? <laughs> to be Pretend honest that. with you, yeah, I think it, if it wasn't a distraction, then it was, yeah, to get everybody on board to go over there and do their bidding. <laughs> exactly. They call that a false flag. Yeah. Um, so do you think that being uh, uh, right wing is uh, equivalent to being a conspiracy theorist? Uh, man, I, I can, uh, next, <laughs> next. Uh, do you think Antifa uh, is good? Uh, that organization, I think they got a lot of trouble and stuff, so I don't know if that, if that was good or not. Uh, what about uh, BLM? BLM, do you support BLM? Um, I mean, I'm not like at all of the, all of the parades and things like that, but I believe in some of the beliefs that they have. I agree. Yeah. So, uh, what about, um, do you think that, what about, what do you think about the defund the police movement? Do you think that we should defund the police or do you think we should allocate funds, uh, in the right places for police or what, what do you think about that? Oh man, that, that's a touch, uh, a touchy one, man. I mean, because our police do have to have things you know to yeah. to keep them going you know because if we don't have something uh to you know to help us against evil and crime man it, it'd be a lawless land it, it would be chaos so yeah i mean the police need to have their stuff man they do have to have it but i just wish that they were all with good intentions you know yeah exactly you know, yeah. there's a lot of corrupt people out there uh, yeah and well, everything they have to, they, everywhere they, but if they don't get like proper but there's a lot funding, of good too yeah if they don't get proper funding then they won't get proper training right know, so exactly yeah. yeah um so all right now it's time for the extra random question um red or green green what oh um the sky or the ocean Oh man, uh, I'd have to say the sky. I'd have to say the sky. Uh, mountains or a canyon? Mountains. Um, the desert or uh, a snowy place? <laughs> yeah. Hmm, probably a desert. Um, uh, uh, Mickey's or Bud Light? <laughs> Uh, it just depends on where I'm going now. If I'm trying to get messed up, I, I'll choose Mickey. <laughs> okay. But uh, but if I just want something to drink, it'd probably be Bud Light. I love Mickey's. Uh, so yeah, I like them hunt. too. Uh, boy, man, I like to hunt and fish, but because uh, I fish, <laughs> yeah, I fish. Uh, I'd have to say fishing. Okay. Uh, do you think that aliens are real? Man, <laughs> uh, I believe there's a lot of things, man. Uh, I believe in a lot of things, and yeah, I, I think aliens could be real. <laughs> do you think that UFOs aliens, could be real? Do you think that aliens are uh, like an interdimensional spirit or like force, or do you think that they're physical aliens out there? Man, I think there could be all kinds, man. Uh, some that take form. It just depends on where where they're from. Depends on how they're built. Yeah. So, I think there's different kinds. What uh, what would you have to say to anybody that wants to do what you do when it comes to music or lifestyle? Like, what would you give? What advice would you give them? To do what I do. Um, yeah, when it comes to music. When it comes to music, um, all I can say is uh, try to find beats, find find instrumentals. If you can create them yourself, create them. But if you can't, you got to try to buy them. Don't use those YouTube beats and stuff like that. You know where. You can have copyright infringements, but first of all, just come up with a beat that's yours, and you know. And then from there, all you do is uh, find one that moves you. And then, for me, I just think that 
uh, I come up with a, a hook for uh, the hook first, then now I can make my verses around that. That's my topic. So if kids can learn how to build a song, they can do something. There's a lot of people in this world that don't even know the first step to actually building a song in a in a format, you know. So yeah, that's what I would say. Start with that and then record it. And then once you've recorded it and everything is is up and up and up, then you can uh, take your instrumental down to Lot Six or Mama Sue's and practice it and get better at your craft and uh who knows you know once you upload it and put it out there on the internet it could be a one hit wonder it could be a, su a success so yeah and if you have a passion for making music don't stop man don't stop if it's what you love to do do it do it so uh what would what would you say to uh the people that support you like what is something you would say to your fans Ah oh, man, I I would tell all my fans, man, how much I appreciate them. You know what I mean, and uh, uh, tell them thank you, you know, for being there and and having my back. You know what I mean, and and supporting what I do, because uh, yeah, man, not, not a lot of people support me, and that and that's fine. That's fine, because I'm still gonna do what I do. But if I can even have one fan that likes what I do, hey, thank you. Heck yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Do you have any closing statements? Um, uh, man, all I could say is uh, thank you, J-Rob, for letting me have this opportunity to, to get in front of this camera. I'm nervous and uh, feeling shy, but uh, yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, people ought to look you up. Uh, of course. Yeah. Do you have any shout-outs to anybody? You can shout-out anybody, everybody you can. <laughs> yeah, shoot, man. There's so many people I could shout-out, but I, I definitely want to just shout-out to the music community, everybody that comes out and rocks the mic and shows us what you do and uh you know and shares it with us man shout out to all of y'all man all of y'all and everybody that's putting it on for us you know and you know giving us a place to go uh, i want to give a shout out to my boy otw steady yeah that's been my that's been my rider right there and uh he's always been on my team so you know what i'm saying uh, yeah definitely big shout out to him and uh you guys can check me out on, on YouTube, you know. You can find me on uh, uh, Apple Music, Spotify, TikTok, and uh, you can go to Facebook. You can find me under Berto Brown, and uh, you can check me out on Treeline Productions. That's my page that I'm, I'm trying to connect with people and try to make it grow and keep this music thing on and going. So. Well, heck yeah. So now we're at the, uh, the final segment of this and I will give you one minute uh, to rap a freestyle oh written, shit a freestyle written or to rant okay. one minute as soon as it hits a minute so I'll just do a 16 if you do something one minute starting now oh damn all right um I'm that Oklahoma boy, found in the dry town. When it gets hot, drop the top, let the bass sound. Pushing 15s on some low pros when I roll. Chrome spoke, slow coast, hard candy overdose. Got a chip on my shoulder, suck the safe, getting colder. Aw, oh, man, that's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> I got distracted. Oh, yeah, I got distracted. Yeah, yeah man, I got distracted. Right. <laughs> and that wasn't even a good verse, man. That wasn't even a good no, verse. No, no, no. Give it up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I'm far from perfect, but one day I'll get close. <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Later. <laughs> I'm up early getting paper till I pass out. I see me winning every time I pull the cash out. Swimming and women got these haters feeling assed out. Smoke rolling out the window when I mash out. I'm up early getting paper till I pass out. I see me winning every time I pull the cash out. Swimming and women got these haters feeling masked out. Smoke rolling out the window when I mash out. I hit the ground running cause I gotta go get it. I'm on my grind to get mine to increase my digits. I'm just a man, understand I gotta handle business. Plus I do it on my lonely cause I'm independent. Ever since I was a kid I had a poor life. Them hard times made a struggle just to get by. Well it is what it is.